Guys, I've been wanting to do this for a hot minute. Um, I keep telling myself I'm going to start a podcast or something. I, it's not happening today. It's not. You know what I am going to do though? I'm going to sit here while I drive home for like 30-ish minutes and I'm going to talk some not gonna curse we'll see we'll see because i do have a potty mouth i'm gonna try not to curse but i'm just gonna talk for no reason for fun and if you feel like listening to me if you just need something to throw on in the background go for it girl go for it listen to me talk my ish okay love you i know the vibes because i do this all the time sometimes i'm on youtube scrolling through video essay after video essay after video essay after think piece after think piece and i'm just like where are the girlies just talking ish where are the girlies who are just spouting the first thing that comes to their head that's exactly why i love the broski report because pretty broski she just says what's on her mind immediately that's like it and that's what i do i talk to myself in the car why not record it become a famous youtuber and make money huh best idea ever best idea freaking ever okay anyways i'm sitting in the wendy's parking lot right now i just had asiago chicken sandwich and some french fries and a diet coke because you girls are on to something the diet coke itches i don't want to go so bad what the fuck is itches what is an itch anyways the diet coke girlies have been on something for a while and i've hated 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 sweeteners for the longest time but i guess i'm part of the club now whatever it's just ice now but yeah so i'm gonna pull out of this parking lot across the street from the college that i went to for what a year and then i'm gonna head home and you guys are gonna come with me and we're gonna have a grand time I'm just gonna listen to me talk if I hit a pothole you are probably gonna hear me curse once or twice I'm so sorry I do apologize in advance for your sensitive ears um but yeah let's go on this journey together look at that light I making me look so gorgeous <laughs> okay first topic of discussion looking at me right now can you guys tell this is a wig be honest be 100 percent for real be honest it's not gonna offend me if it is i just need to get better at concealing but yeah this is a wig mind you my leave out looks fricked up right now it looks messed up it looks crazy she looks cuckoo bon bon cuckoo bonkers i got that from my bestie um but yeah she looks crazy right now but i feel like it blends relatively well somebody at my church told me it looks like it blends pretty well they couldn't tell at first so i'm taking that as a win personally <coughs> excuse me that's gonna happen a lot um but yeah i'm taking that as a win personally i think it looks fine i think it looks good even um but yeah i really hope i don't have to break this video up into like two or something like that because i do not have the most space on my phone um, and I'm recording this on my phone. So pray for me, guys. Pray for me. Worst case, um, if it just shuts off randomly, you know why. I'm probably not going to, like, try and edit this or whatever. I'm just going to post it as is. So let's pray. Pray for me and my sanity or whatever. I need gas, too. Um, let's talk about my finances. Let's talk about that because that is another crazy topic of discussion at this point moment in time so i am not good at saving money i have been stuck at like i think like uh 3700 for the past probably six months every single paycheck i put 150 dollars in and then when i inevitably spend all my money i put it i take 150 dollars back out so it's just like stagnant at least i have money saved up which is like really really good I'm so proud of myself that was i was doing so good for a while and then plummeted downhill last christmas time like around this time last year i had a full-on budget like a girl was i want to say a b-word so bad i have to train myself to stop cursing but girl 
I was on my Zoom. I was on my Zoom. I was killing it. But I was also miserable. <laughs> when I was like budgeting hardcore, I think I did it for like a solid two paychecks. And I was like, I can't do this anymore. I need a dopamine rush and I need it now. I need a dopamine rush and I need it now. When I tell you, it was miserable. It was so miserable. I would take receipts from like whatever store I was shopping at and I would cross reference them with the like planned out to the dollar budget. When I tell you I saved so much money, I saved so much money. I had to the dollar how much money I was spending on my expenses, on food, blah, blah, blah. And if I went over my food budget, I had to pull money from another budget. So I had to be like, okay, well, I only set aside this much money for fast food and this much money for groceries. So I guess I can put like $5 towards my fast food that was supposed to be for groceries. And then when I went over that budget, inevitably, I was stressed out about that too. And then I just gave up on it because it's just... It stressed me out so bad, but I saved so much money. I need to find a way to like incorporate budgeting, but like a little bit more lax, a little bit less stressful because who girl, every single time I got a receipt, I was taking a picture of it. If I lost it, then it stressed me out. Cause I was like, I don't remember exactly how much I spent and it doesn't immediately show up in my bank statement. So like, what am I going to do? What if I overspend? Like what's, oh. It was a lot. It was a lot. It was a very trying time <laughs> in my life. Like I said, though, it worked out for the positive. I need to bring that back for 2024, clearly. But yeah, so needless to say, I am not the best um, financially. I do also have ADHD. I'm diagnosed ADHD and bipolar, which is crazy. Um, I don't really claim <laughs> Which sounds crazy to say. I don't really claim that diagnosis. <laughs> like it's a t <laughs> like one of those TikTok manifestation videos. Like to claim, I do not claim bipolar <laughs> disorder. I personally think I'm the funniest person ever. I personally think I'm hilarious. <laughs> Anyways, yeah, so I was diagnosed bipolar, but the psychiatrist that I had at the time absolutely flat out refused to diagnose me as ADHD, like with ADHD. And so I had to find a new psychiatrist, or I technically didn't. My general practitioner diagnosed me with ADHD, but like, if you knew me growing up, you know I absolutely have ADHD. I like dissociate in the middle of sentences, and it is so annoying, which like, that's not the main signifier of ADHD. I feel like if that's the main signifier, everybody has ADHD. But like, I have ADHD. I don't need to explain myself. I have ADHD. And it is annoying. It is so annoying. It's not this quirky, cute e disorder everybody thinks. It is so annoying that my dad's been telling me for probably the past six months to clean my room or he's gonna kick me out. And I literally cannot do it. I can, I can. The last time he did this, I, when I tell you, I literally almost got kicked out because I hadn't cleaned my room. Not because I didn't want to. I don't like living in squalor. It's not that bad. But like, I cannot bring myself to do anything sometimes. That could also be depression though, because I do struggle with that. I'm just like a horde of mental disorders, you know? the Gen Z in me <laughs> anyways yeah um if there's no dopamine involved with something probably not gonna do it um but I'm working I'm working on that I don't want to be that way I'm not I don't I don't want to stay stagnant I don't want to just coast for the rest of my life I have goals I have things I want to achieve like I want to be the it girl don't think that's gonna happen for me but I'm going to die trying, you know? I'm in pigtails today. I feel like that's, like, very slightly it girl of me. I went to Macy's at the mall, and I saw the most gorgeous cherry red, more like a mahogany red. It was so cute. Boots, right? Like, calf boots. And I've never had a problem with, like, my calves fitting into boots. And I've only really heard about that recently. 
tell me why I try to pull those things up. No way. <laughs> no way. Not even stretching. No way. Not gonna happen. Nope. They were so cute too though and they were 50% off. It sucks because I know like cherry red or like red is like the color of the season. Whatever. But like I didn't need them. I'm, when am I gonna wear those? Not to mention the fact they literally did not fit my big ASS calves. Nope. But yeah, I think I like kind of underestimate how much weight I've gained over the past few years. When I started in the pandemic, I think I was like maybe 175 pounds. I'm like 200 pounds now. I'm like 200. No, that's what it was. I went to the doctor. They told me I was 222. How slight is that? Angel numbers. I know some red pill stupid man is going to potentially watch this video and be like 222 pounds you're freaking disgusting you should be ashamed of yourself maybe so babe but i'm not you want to know what i am ashamed of i am ashamed of my mental state i am ashamed of my finance financial situation i'm not ashamed of my body i don't have the energy to be ashamed of my body i'm not i'm not i if i'm being honest i don't have the energy to be ashamed at all you know what makes me feel bad my quality of life it's it's my quality of life is up there like I have a great quality of life it's very first world problems to be like oh my quality of life is so awful it's not that bad I just have like mommy issues and daddy issues and a lot of issues and mental health issues and financial issues and most of the time I want to you know but life could be so much worse life could be so much worse oh my god i'm gonna get so depressing but like i think about the like people of palestine which you know whatever if you don't support palestine click off i don't i don't i don't know what you want me to tell you um i think about the people of palestine and i'm just like what, what the fuck am i complaining for there we go there we go first cuss word of the video what am I complaining for, huh? What am I complaining for? Me and my nice house and my cozy bed. Oh, I have bipolar disorder. <sighs> People are literally dying. I watched the video of a child, like a literal dead child. And I, I don't think I'm ever going to be the person that I was before. And I think that's a good thing. Not a good thing in the sense of like a child is dead. Because of course that's not a good thing. But in the sense of like that changed me fundamentally as a person i will never stop never stop fighting for the rights of people who are less fortunate than me never and it's so disheartening to me to see people who just don't believe it who don't care that's that's crazy what are you talking about what are you talking about i literally have like debilitating depression over this stuff and there are people who are just like la di da di da i don't care it doesn't affect me huh how does it not affect you obviously you don't live there or you don't know anybody who's there from from there personally probably but like how are you not like debilitated with grief almost all the time because i know i am even when i'm not thinking about palestine i am debilitated with grief and depression a lot I have constant anxiety that I'm gonna lose my job constant anxiety that everybody around me hates me like my dad and I had a really tense relationship when I was growing up so I have constant anxiety that he's just gonna like lash out at me for no reason for something granted this is like pers on a personal note <laughs> this is not like something to celebrate but it's like a funny anecdote to me both like my sister and um like my sister she was in a car accident and then someone else who is like close to my family like something happened with them too which like not put them in like a bad light but like <laughs> all I all to say is like based on some situations in my life and my familial situation right now I'm essentially the golden child, and I'm low-key reveling in it, but I'm also extremely anxious, extremely anxious about 
when that's going to come to pass and when I'm going to be the black sheep again. Because I don't want to go back to being the black sheep. My dad is, like, being so nice to me right now. He's not, like, he'll usually get, like, ticked off at little things that I do. But he's not ticked off. He's like, so, we went to the movies. He really irritated me at the movies. He put the flash on, on his phone at the movies. Was he raised in a barn? My grandmama didn't raise him that way. I don't know what happened to him. Anyways, he put his flash on at the movies. Cuckoo bonkers, crazy. Don't know where he got that from. Um, Phone full brightness, scrolling on Facebook. Like what? Please. I have an AMC Stubbs membership. I can't be, I come back to this theater often. I cannot show my face here again, knowing, well, yes I can because I pay for that membership. But like, knowing that you disrespected the fundamentals of like sitting in a theater and watching a movie. It's not gonna fly, it's not gonna fly. Love my dad though. Um, like I said, we've had a tense relationship in the past, but like, I love him endlessly. He, I would not have life without him. Granted, I don't want life a lot of times, but I am grateful for my dad and everything that he's ever done for me. I am so extremely privileged and I try my best to make sure that I check that a lot because although my life isn't perfect by any means, I've been afforded so many luxuries and I'm so grateful for that. My parents, the car that I'm driving right now, my car, Technically, it's not my name, so it's technically not my car. But my parents bought this cash for me for my 18th birthday. I am so grateful for that. I am so grateful for that. I saw a tweet earlier today, too, about, like, how people don't... Like, a lot of people whose parents bought their car for them underestimate how big of a blessing that is. Absolutely not. I recognize how big of a blessing that is. My best friend pays for her car. And, like, I think she was in an accident a few months ago. She had to pay for that. And she has to pay the insurance. And she has to do all of these things. And I'm just like, I'm so grateful that I don't have a lot of that. I pay my insurance via my parents. But, like, I have the most minimal bills. They don't make me pay rent. I don't, like, I'm so extremely grateful. As soon as I, like, start to feel bad about myself or start to feel down or whatever, I have to check myself. I have to. Because... What do you mean? What do you mean? Like, not saying that, like, depression isn't valid, but, like, what do you mean you're depressed and you live in, you live rent-free in the biggest room in your house, full-size bed just for you, you have literally anything anyone could ever want, pretty much, at, like, I literally have to, like, stop myself from shopping sometimes, or, like, I'll stop myself in the middle of shopping thinking, I don't even need anything, what am I here for? I don't need anything. I don't need anything. There's things that I want, of course. Like, I want a Blue Marine fuzzy bag. I want the newest Mew Mew collection. I want high heel Crocs. Don't start. Yes, I do. I do want high heel Crocs. What are they called? The Croc Stomp? I think they're so cute. I don't care what... Yeah, shut up. I don't care what you think. I want them. Maybe I'll get those for myself for Christmas. <laughs> As if I haven't already bought myself like six different Christmas presents. Don't talk about it. Don't talk about it. I don't want to hear your mouth, okay? Yes, I have bought myself multiple Christmas presents already. Treat yourself. Do I have any money in my bank account right now? 20 bucks. No, actually, I think it's down to three. However, I am at peace with that right now. <laughs> Anyways, yeah. Like, I'm... I am very privileged in my life and I do my best to recognize that, check myself on that because as a kid, oh my god was I a spoiled brat. Oh my god I was a spoiled brat. I think about too if my parents hadn't gotten a divorce because my both of my, my, my parents got a divorce and they both remarried. If my parents hadn't have divorced, I would have been a raging bleep. I would probably be at some Ivy League school, blah, blah, I'd probably be at some Ivy League school with mommy and daddy issues. I mean, I've already got them now, but like me, rich girl, super uber rich girl, because mind you, my parents both had full time, like high tax bracket, not high tax bracket, but like we weren't poor <laughs> by any means. Um, 
the house that I grew up in that I was like born and like raised in for the first like three I think three to five to like five years old until my parents got a divorce and my mom couldn't like keep up with it anymore the house that we lived in was I think like four or five bedrooms there was two staircases crazy crazy I think about like obviously I was only there until I was like five years old so I have limited memory of the house but I think about that house sometimes and I'm like how crazy is that we had main staircase front of the house and then we had back staircase through the laundry room that led to the upstairs and like the long hallway where my bedroom was what do you mean what do you mean we were not poor by any means and we were also in like a really wealthy part of like the area that we live in so yeah I would have been a spoiled brat absolutely as if I wasn't already and I grew up with like divorced parents you know I would have been a major spoiled brat I like I also probably would have had a worse eating disorder than I did have um yeah so I don't know counter blessings it is probably a good thing that I ended up the way that I did I for the most part like who I am as a person you know I feel like I'm a kind person I'm really smart for what it's worth um I do have my stupid moments but like everybody does if you don't have your stupid moments you're freaking lying if you don't have moments where you're just like you know what was that ew so sorry pretend that did not happen but like if you don't have your moments where you're just like dumb like I don't believe you I don't believe you you absolutely do don't lie I'm so glad that this hasn't like shut off and stopped recording because whoo, imagine you can't hear me this whole time I recorded a TikTok earlier and the sound was just like off that was super fun super fun Woo! anyways yeah so that's my life if you were wondering what else can i talk about <laughs> sorry <laughs> okay so i mentioned Brittany broski at the top of this this isn't a podcast this is a video this is a video anyways <laughs> i mentioned Brittany broski because I love her I love her so much what was that weak ass heart second class word of the video so sorry pretend you didn't hear it anyways um love Brittany broski love the broski report she tells a lot about men i cannot say that i will do the same i think i am too introspective to talk about men that much i used to be the type of person to like deflect from anything introspective and i would project everything I never wanted to talk about myself, never wanted to think about myself, never wanted to be sad. I'm still kind of that way. I avoid sadness. I'm like the type of depressed girl. That's why I feel like me and my best friend are like the best polar opposites. Like that's why we're so close is because she's the type of depressed of like she listens to sad songs and she feels her sadness and she listens to the lyrics and she she listens to things that she can relate to and you know like she enjoys not I won't say she enjoys but like she enjoys more sad music you know like her depression is like a true stereotypical depression of like sad girl vibes you know but like I feel like I am the deflect depression I don't know are these like legit types of depression I don't know how this works but I feel like I'm the person who likes to deflect and pretend that I'm not depressed but it doesn't work ever and it just kind of makes me more depressed because when I'm happy, or at least I try to be happy all the time, or at least neutral, or at least baseline, you know, um, my sads are like way more sad. <laughs> so like, I'm like happy-go-lucky all the time, all the time, nonstop. I don't want to be sad ever, 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 ever. My favorite movie, Legally Blonde. My second favorite movie, Last Holiday. I should rewatch Last Holiday. It's the Christmas season. Oh my god. By the way, today I'm recording this. What was that? Oof. I'm recording this. I think today's the 10th. Yeah, today's the 10th because 
today's the last day of the Sephora sale and the little thing that I read said it ends on the 10th so today is the 10th but yeah um so I think I might go home and watch the last holiday I watched love actually for the first time what was that Friday yeah that was Friday I watched love actually for the first time and it was so cute I can't believe I've never seen that before shame for shame but yeah so um what was I talking about yeah I'm the like type of depressed that like I don't want to be sad and so I deflect from my sadness all the time until it overwhelms me and then I'm like extremely depressed that's why a lot of times I can't listen to folklore without crying I hear seven just tee tee just like tee tee now motor go nabu he nabu he I'm like tee tee just like tee tee Tell me that you'll be my baby. Can you tell them? I was never a K-pop. Let's talk about that. I was never a K-pop stan. I saw the BTS girlies and I was like, oof. No, thank you. Love you so much. I remember my fangirl phase, my One Direction, Five Seconds of Summer, especially my emo phase. That was a crazy time in my life. It was a very crazy time in my life. Led to a lot of experiences. Won't say good or bad, but a lot of experiences. Um, <laughs> but yeah, my fangirl period of my life was a very interesting time. And when I saw what the K-pop girlies were doing, because let's talk about that for a second. The shift from One Direction fan, One Direction, Five Seconds of Summer. I think that's like the natural progression of it. One Direction fan to Five Seconds of Summer fan to... BTS to K-pop in general and K-pop boy groups as that at that I did not want to be that girl I remember when the five sauce stand started shifting to K-pop and I was like no no that's not me I'm not interested but I did like watch K-dramas growing up like the first I can't I don't know if it was the first but I'm pretty sure it was the first K-drama that I watched was called Scent of a Woman um and it was so good it was so good i remember bawling my little eyes out at like 10 because it came out in 2011 i remember bawling my little eyes out at like 10 years old over this k-drama because it was about this girl who had cancer and she didn't know how long she was gonna live and so she just started living her best life why are like all my movies all my favorite like media things about that like last holiday that's literally the plot of last holiday <laughs> Except she didn't have cancer. She wasn't actually sick. Oh, spoiler. Sorry. Sorry. Um, but yeah, so, that, like, I, I was familiar with, like, Korean culture, you know, to an extent. But I had never gotten into K-pop. And then last year, what was the first K-pop song? I think one of the first K-pop songs that I really started to get into, like, I, I knew some Blackpink, you know, whatever. But, like, the first K-pop song I really started to get into crazily enough was Stacy. that's why Stacy will always be in my heart Stacy, run to you so I'm gonna take you yeah that's Bob pop classic because I think 2021 20 yeah 2021 2022 mostly 2022 was like a pop renaissance for me I've always been a pop music girly like I said I am the happy-go-lucky type of depressed I don't want to be depressed I don't want to be depressed, so I deflect from that depression as much as I can. I love pop music. I love pop music. I love her. I love her. Love her so much. Pop is always my number one genre. Always. You know what? Love me some hosier. I, especially his sexy songs, that's another topic. That's another conversation for another day. Especially his sexy songs, like talk, don't get me started. Anyways, love me some rock music love um of course i listen to like post hardcore i literally only listen to like post hardcore pierce the veil of mice and men which like uh, it's tame i didn't get into anything too crazy when i was in my emo phase but I, I had a whole emo phase and i love all of that music still oh my god oh no Ooh, that just reminded me of the fallout boy sale fully i do is my favorite album i think it's like 10th or 11th anniversary or whatever they're doing some type of merch sale tomorrow i don't have any money for it but afterpay might have to be my best friend because 
Fully I Do is my favorite album. Anyways, anyways, what was I talking about? Yes, I am forever a pop girly. I am forever a pop girly. And my pop renaissance, when I started listening to early 2000s pop and stuff like that, oh, changed my life. Changed my life. It's changed my life. Oh my gosh. I still remember where I was when I heard um, Three by Britney Spears for the first time. C Circus, if you see gave me, Britney Spears is like absolute number one pop girly. I don't know. I don't know about number one pop girly. Britney, Taylor, Beyonce. Beyonce is probably number one. Renaissance is my album of 2023. If you saw my 2022, or 2022, my 2022 wrapped, excuse me, my 2022 wrapped was literally, I'm that girl, cozy, K-pop, 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 like, renaissance, 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 K-pop, 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 renaissance, renaissance, K-pop, 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 my number one artist, Beyonce, my number one album, Renaissance, like, I had that album on repeat every single day. I woke up to that album. I love that album, back to front, cover to cover, every single song, no skips, no skips. I said what I said, but yeah, so anyways, K-pop girlies, my K-pop phase started last year with Run To You by Stacey, incredible song, peak pop, like that's the poppiest song to ever pop and if you don't agree that's one thing is like i don't get people who don't like pop music i don't get it it's just happy good vibes it's just good vibes i got my best friend onto queen card changed my life changed her life now we're both queen car queen car i'm hot my boo bam booties hot anyways anyways not yeah Love Queen Card, love Idol, whatever. My K-pop phase started last year. Mind you, I don't listen to boy groups at all. I think that's the one thing that like differenti dif differentiates my like status as a K-pop stan from like the people that I would see on stan Twitter back, way back when. I don't know. Stuff like this makes me wonder if I'm gay. I don't think I am. I mean, maybe I. T I think I'm asexual. If I'm being 100% honest, we're just lear you're learning everything about me today. Just laying it all out, laying it all on the line for you guys. Love you. But yeah, so I don't know if it has anything to do with my sexuality. I just I cannot stand men anymore. <laughs> I think it's more to do with me growing up as a person. And I'm 22. I'm not, you know, my brain's still not fully developed. I think it doesn't fully develop until 24. But I'm just like, I don't want to listen to a man talk. Not, okay, that's an exaggeration too. I don't, I can't really pinpoint it because I, I think I just got to a point where I realized my taste was not diverse at all. It was not diverse. It was not unique. I literally just listened to attractive guys sing about pretty girls and sex. And that's it. I pretty much all of high school only listened to Harry Styles. I had a weird post Malone phase my senior year of high school where I listened to nothing. And when I say nothing, I mean nothing but Post Malone for months. Four months. I don't understand how my parents didn't think I didn't have ADHD or something. Like, they got me tested as a kid, and they were like, no, she's good. No, I'm not. I listen to nothing but Post Malone. When I say nothing, I mean genuinely nothing. When I pulled out my phone and my earbuds, what was playing? Stoney. What was playing? Beer bongs and Bentleys. Nothing else. For months. No other songs. No other artists. Unless my parents were playing something on the radio, I did not listen to anything else but Post Malone for months. Months. It was a problem. He was the background on my laptop. I was in yearbook. I was known as the girl who loved Post Malone. My yearbook staff picture in the yearbook was a picture of me holding up my laptop with the background being Post Malone. It was a small face. It was short, nipped it in the bud right after school. Oh gosh, that was a 
blast from the past. I still can't believe that happened. But yeah, I realized, I guess that was just like my renaissance is I realized my personal renaissance. Anyways, um, I realized like, I don't, I think it was like probably 2022 is when I realized I don't, I listen to a lot of men and that's it. My first concert, men. It was Fall Out Boy. Second concert, man. It was Hosier. Third concert, who's my third concert? Who was my third concert? I think my third concert was Harry. Harry Styles. I think my third concert was Harry Styles. And then, I feel like I'm missing something somewhere in there. But I think my third concert was Harry Styles. Then, it was Jack Harlow. And then I saw Jack Harlow again. I saw somebody in between Jack Harlow and Jack Harlow. (laughs) I don't remember. I did not see a woman in concert like a single woman until Beyonce I saw Beyonce twice and then before that the only time I had ever seen a woman in concert was twice I saw twice at Truist Park on a whim which was crazy I got the tickets for like 70 bucks and that was such a fun show it was such a fun show I realized when I saw Harry Styles I saw Harry Styles because I always thought Harry Styles was hot of course I enjoy his music I love his music It's beautiful, but I loved Harry Styles because Harry Styles was hot. I loved Hosier because Hosier's hot. I went to see Hosier again recently and I had a renaissance with his music and less him as a person. I can recognize the quality of his music, but I think as a kid, because that's what it was, I was a kid. I was listening to Harry Styles because I thought Harry Styles was hot. I loved Harry Styles the person, I was obsessed with him. So I listened to Harry Styles. I was listening to the music and I loved the music, but I loved the music because I loved Harry Styles, you know? I still have a certain nostalgia for his self-titled album and for Fine Line, but I don't have that same nostalgia with Harry's house because kind of the like luster I think is gone. It's out the window, it's not there anymore. I love some songs on Harry's house, because I like those songs, not because I love Harry Styles. He's a man, he's just a guy. Same reason why the K-pop songs that I love to death, Run To You by Stacey, I love Run To You by Stacey because I love Run To You by Stacey. Not because I love Stacey, which I do, but I love Stacey because I love their music. I love their performance quality. I love them as a group, you know? I'm not doing it obviously not out of attraction because they were minors when they debuted which is you know that's a whole other conversation maybe we'll talk about that next time but yeah just I realized that a lot of this was out of attraction I think the only groups that I actually like loved the music I enjoyed the music was fallout boy and my emo face because I really loved the music I think I liked the noise of it you know And I like the words too, but I'm not going to lie. I'm not going to be one of those, you know, emo girls who's like, oh, I know exactly what they're saying. No. When, what's his name? Austin? Austin Carlisle, I think. I think he has like abuse allegations, which is lovely. But when he would start screaming in a song, I don't know what he was saying. I don't. I don't. I'm not gonna find I don't know what he's saying but it sounded good and I would look up the lyrics on Google later and they weren't abhorrent so it sounded nice and I liked the sound that's all that I cared about the drums were killer so good oh my gosh also fun fact I am birthday twins with um Mikey Fuentes from Pierce the Veil Mike Fuentes, his girlfriend slash fiance slash wife, Alicia, Alicia Nett. Love her so much. Oh, love her so much. We're birthday twins. I'm birthday twins with Jordan Woods too. So I'm basically Kylie Jenner's best friend. Can't, don't know if that's a flex or not, but, (laughs) but yeah. Um, yeah. So I just like fell out of love with a lot of the male artists that I was super into like thinking back to five seconds of summer they had great music excuse me but i liked five seconds of summer because they were hot (laughs) 
I liked Five Seconds of Summer before they were hot. Their music came second to me. I read fan fiction day in and day freaking out. I wrote some. It was not good. Do not look it up. Do if if you even have an inclination to try and see, oh, she says she wrote fan fiction. What does she write fan fiction? Don't. No. Don't do it. You're not gonna find it anyway because it's under a weird weird username I made up when I was in middle school <laughs> under my Wattpad account but don't don't do it it was about the fan fiction it was about the reading more than anything I thought honestly it was like in my head they were characters I remember when I finally did get to see Harry Styles I saw him at State Farm Arena I really could have like I'm kind of glad honestly I did really wish for a long time that I got a chance to go see him um, when he did a show at the Coca-Cola Roxy, I'm in, in Georgia, um, uh, when he did a show at the Coca-Cola Roxy, cause that's a more intimate venue, but also the acoustics in that venue are trash garbage, poo poo, but, um, I wish for a long time that I had gone to see him there, honestly, it would probably, it would have been detrimental for my mental health, um, but I remember when I saw his show, Love on Tour, at State Farm Arena, I think I was 20 then. I think, I think, yeah, I think I was 20. Ugh, I don't remember. I don't, I don't remember what happened yesterday. I was in Denver last weekend. Don't remember that. Um, <laughs> I do, but you know, but with the show, with the concert, I remember when he finally came out on stage in his like little luggage cart thing and he popped up on stage with the lights down <clears throat> whatever I threw up in my mouth <laughs> like, I saw him standing on stage and I screamed threw up in my mouth a little bit started crying for a second and then I was like what what is happening what is going on and then I came to my senses and I was like oh so he's just a guy <laughs> because I had worked myself up countless fan fictions I read about this man countless don't even know don't even know how many fan fictions I read about this guy. Countless. Countless. I see him on stage, in person, in real life. Every single fantasy I've ever had has manifested in this moment. And then I'm like, oh, so he's just a guy. <laughs> like, at that point, I think I had, like... I had my first kiss when I was 18. I'd been with guys before. I don't think... Like, I hadn't... I don't I haven't done anything but like I had been on dates with guys and stuff like that like I'd been because when I was in high school you know I didn't get attention from guys I didn't no guys ever looked twice at me you know but now that I'm an adult like if I'm being I have H cup boobs guys are throwing themselves at me like not all the time but they throw themselves at me it's not hard for me to find a guy and when I saw, this sounds so stupid, but when I saw Harry Styles standing on that stage, I was like, he's literally just a man. He's literally just a man. Not saying that I could pull Harry Styles. I mean, maybe, but like, <laughs> but I was just like, okay, like he's, he's a guy. He's a guy who makes good music. Okay. And who else makes good music? Hosier makes good music. All of Five Seconds of Summer make good music. Fall Out Boy, all men, they make good music. Pierce the Veil, all men, they make good music. What's the big deal? Big whoop. Big whoop. Who cares? Who cares? <sighs> Who cares? Anyways, let me finish my conversation on K-pop and then I gotta go. Pray that this video actually, like, saves. <laughs> That's one thing I'm worried about with it being so big. But, um... Yeah, we've been talking for 45 minutes almost, guys. It's been such a fun talk, such a fun conversation. Anyways, yeah, all that to say, I love K-pop because I love K-pop. I love the music. I really, really love the music. Like, I remember when Pop by Nyan came out, shifted my worldview. <laughs> that was the song... Stacy Run to You was the song that introduced me to K-pop and I was like, okay, I can I can kind of vibe with this. When Pop came out, Nyon's solo debut, my worldview shifted. 
I became a K-pop stan. I became a full-blown stan. Because what do you mean? Pop, pop, pop. Huh? Pop, pop, pop. Yeah. Turn me upside down. Flip me inside out. I'm a whole, I'm a whole brand new bleep. Bussin'. Yeah. Yeah. Changed my worldview. Changed my worldview. That song is so good. So good. Pop classic. Forget the K. Forget the K. Pop classic. And it just sucks. <laughs> it sucks. Because there hasn't been a good JYP release since. Not a single good song. However, comma. Let's talk about Bratty by Itzy. Y'all slept on her. Bratty by Itzy? B-side, mind you. Cake is made. Bratty by Itzy is genius. It's genius. Not Shy? I remember when I finally heard Not Shy for the first time. Yeah. Better than Wannabe, dare I say. Like, the shoulder shake is all good and everything, but it carries. You want to know what the number one Itzy song is? Not Shy, Bratty. Are you with the wall? Are you with the wall? I don't care. It's my opinion and I'm sticking with it. Not Shy, Bratty. Top two Itzy songs of all time, babe. I haven't heard the other B-sides on the other albums, so don't come for me. But yeah, New Jeans? I literally had a whole conversation with my mom earlier about like minors and debuting as minors. We can talk about that another, another time. Say what you want about Cookie. Not an appropriate song. Not an appropriate song. They can say whatever they want to. That song hits so hard. It slaps. Imagine that song sung by Doja Cat. Oh wait. Tell me I'm wrong. The yeah at the beginning of the song. That's Doja Cat coded and you know it. You know it. Yeah, Doja Cat verse at the beginning. Nega Mandan Cookie. Yeah, yeah. Tell me I'm wrong. I'm not. I'm not. Yeah. But yeah, I'm a K pop stan and it is valid. It is valid. You want to know what's not valid though? Me wasting my money on K pop albums. It's not a good idea. I do it anyway though. Just bought La Lisa a few weeks back. Still haven't put my poster up. That's the only reason I bought the album. What am I going to do with the dang photo book? Be for real. Nothing. I looked at it once. That's it. <laughs> I want a light stick. I want a black pink light stick. For why? No idea. But I want one. That's another thing we could talk about is just the rampant consumerism in K-pop. Because what do you mean I have multiple versions of the same album? Why do I have two versions of Twice Ready to Be when I don't like a single song? I won't say I don't. Ready to Be is a good song, but it's not great. <laughs> Best Twice title track. Just proposed that question for myself. Signal. And Signal them on there. Didi, 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 didi. Y'all sleep on that so hard. What is love? TT, obviously. Um, like, ooh, ah. Uh -huh. Let me see. How you gonna treat me? Yeah, that's one thing I regret. Um, well, I can't reg say I regret, but I guess when I saw everybody jumping on the K-pop train when I was in high school, I was thinking it was only boy groups. And I was like, no. I don't want to be because there was a girl in my high school who loved k-pop and I didn't get it because I guess because my love for Harry Styles my love for One Direction all of that was based on attraction I loved the music of course but it was based on attraction the only people that I really listened to for the music and for the music only was like Ariana Grande um, I got into Taylor Swift. I heard Reputation for the first time. Changed my worldview. That's another album. Changed my worldview. Okay? Changed my worldview. Flipped my world upside down. Of course, then it happened again with Folklore. Because I listened to Reputation. And then I just left Taylor for a while. Because Lover was not it for me. I was not mature enough to understand. I do understand now. I do understand. Holy, fully, truly. Truly, madly, deeply. Yeah. Um, but yeah, most of the 
music that I listened to was based on the attraction for the artist. And so I was not attracted <laughs> to BTS. I'm still not. Sorry. Sorry. Sorry about it. Um, I do think Jungkook's kind of cute, though, now. Maybe it's just after, like, Golden. Standing next to you. I get it. I get it. Yeah. I get it. <laughs> um, but, yeah. Like, most of my music taste was based on attraction. Finding them cute. Being okay with the music, I guess. You know? But finding them cute was, like, the biggest thing. And I didn't really find BTS cute. I thought it was a little bit weird how people like infantilize them which that's a whole other conversation again but I guess I didn't realize that girl groups were a thing I mean obviously I knew because I'd heard um what was that 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 person on YouTube RYXN who made the like dance small edits I think it's Ryan um yeah I watched those and I didn't know until I started listening to K-pop that the intro song is fancy <laughs> how awful how awful is that um but yeah so yeah yeah <laughs> I don't remember what I was talking about I'm not even gonna lie I know I was talking about k-pop what was I talking That's what it was. This is the last thing I'm going to say and then I'm going to end this and pray that it actually saves to my phone. But I just wish I was around for third gen when they were debuting. If I was a Blackpink stan from debut, you would never hear the end of it. You would never hear the end of it. If I was a fan of Blackpink at debut, I would have literally, I would have met them all by now. We'd be besties. I'd be their stylist. Like, what do you mean? What do you mean? I would have gone to college with the expectation of moving to Korea so that I could be their stylist. Yeah, I would have. I And I would be there right now. I would be fluent in Korean right now if I was a stand of Blackpink from debut. Yeah, they would have had more comebacks. Yeah, yeah. They would have left YG a long time ago. <laughs> oh, YG's holding them back. I hate that they re-signed that contract. Anyways, um... Yeah, if I keep trying to talk anymore, I'm just going to keep dissociating and we're just going to be sitting here for hours. So we're going to end it here. I'm home now. I've been home for like 10 minutes. I got to pee so bad. So yeah, this has been fun. Even if nobody watches this, I want to do these more often. This is fun. This is really fun. So yeah. Anyways, toodles. Be soon. Should I start an ASMR channel? Oh my gosh. Maybe I will. Stay tuned.